everybody. Welcome to Lab 1.0. Um, hopefully you guys are all caught up and have gotten through the first lab. Um, this one is going to go along with uh, what we have been looking at in this module, which has to do with things like locations and names and how that fits into our understanding of the world. We're going to focus specifically on the idea of a toponym, which is one of the vocabulary words from the, uh, the unit notes um, on map reading. And so let's go ahead and get started. Um, to begin with, you're going to find this document. It should be in Google Drive for you. It should say ArcGIS Lab 1.0, Toponyms and Sense of Place. Um, this one is also going to use ArcGIS.com like you did for the first one. Um, we're going to add some skills on top of it, though. Uh, in addition to some of the things that you've already learned to do in that first lab, you're also going to learn how to label features on a map and how to use analysis tools to count the number of features within a polygon. One thing I will note on this is if you get to the place down here um, where it says to click on summarize data, the analysis button and summarize data, that analysis button is not showing up. That means you have not logged in with your um, school account. You've probably logged in with Google or created a free account. It is not available outside of the school account. So you'll have to go back in and log in um, correctly in order to use it. So let's get started. Um, to begin with, we're not going to create a new map. There's already a map created for you. Um, and if you just click on this bit.ly link, it'll take us to um, the map of the United States with some points on it. And you're going to need to log in like before. Hopefully I did that right. There we go. And um, you'll have your name up in the corner and uh, these points, different things here. So if you wanted to zoom in a little so you can see it, um, do that that way. Um, just to give you some context, we've got three layers over here. We've got a layer called Martin Luther King Jr., one called Robert E. Lee, and one called USA States. So what are these? Well, USA States, if we turn them all off to begin with and leave just USA States on, we can see that USA States is exactly what we think it is. It is the boundaries of the US States. If you don't know what a state is, you can click on it and it will tell you the name of the state just like that. The other two layers are places named after either Robert E. Lee or Martin Luther King Jr. If you're not sure who those people are or you're a little fuzzy on it, make sure you read a little bit of the Wikipedia articles about them that I've linked in here. But basically, these are people who, at different times in our history, uh, have been important to Americans, at least in some parts of the United States. And as a result, like all important people, things get named after them. These are all the places, as of last year, that were named after either one of these two people in the United States, according to the U.S. Geologic Survey. So if we turn on the Robert E. Lee layer, you can see all the points and... and um, they're clickable. They can tell you exactly what it is, lots of details about it, where it is and everything. Um, and then if you turn on the Martin Luther King Jr. places, you can see that as well. What we're going to do is we are going to count um, the number of places in each state named after each person. So before we start, answer this question right here. So take a minute and do that. Go ahead and pause the video and answer question two. And then when you're done, we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, like I said, you have a, a new button up here that we've never used. It's called the analysis button. Basically, what we're going to have the, the map do is instead of us having to go through and say, okay, what's this state again? That's Oregon. How many things named after either one of them is in Oregon? We could zoom in and we could count. We could say one, two, and I don't know if that one is. Maybe not. Let's click on it. Nope, that's in Washington, so that doesn't count. So two, it's Robert E. Lee. One state down, a whole bunch more to go. Instead of doing that, we're going to let the application count for us using this analysis toolbar. So here's how we do it. And I am on step three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Um, and so you can walk through this, but I'm going to show you how to do it. I'm going to do this for the Robert E. Lee monuments. Basically, what I'm going to do is click analysis, summarize data and aggregate points. Aggregate means put things into groups. And so what we're doing is we're putting all the green points um, that are grouped by state together, and we're putting all the orange points that are grouped by states together. 
so that we can see the difference between uh, monuments named after one person or the other. So let's start with Robert E. Lee, change the pull down to Robert E. Lee, leave this as USA States, leave that, leave this alone, leave this alone, uh, rename your layer. The naming convention we want to use is this, aggregation of Lee places, and then your last name. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to paste it in here, and I'm going to put my last name. And I'm going to put mine in my archive folder, because I got a lot of stuff in my account, and I keep it archived sometimes. And then the last thing you want to do, as in step seven right here is uncheck the box that says use current map estate map extent and then if that's all looks good hit run analysis and let it run so through the magic of speeding up video uh, we can see that it's already done for me it, it uh, took a little while but i uh, i cut some parts off the video so give it some time probably take 20 or 30 seconds um, for it to work for you and at this point now we are on um, step nine. And what we want to do is we want to um, change the way this looks a little bit. Um, these circles are not very helpful and it doesn't really show us where things are. So instead of leaving it like this, let's change the style uh, of this layer. First thing I want to do is, yeah, I want to show the attribute count of points, but rather than these circles, which aren't very helpful, I'm going to change to counts and amounts color like this. And for options, let's see. Let's change the color symbols here to like a reddish color because the, uh, the Confederacy is usually shown as red. And so I'm going to do that, but I'm going to flip the color wheel because I'm going to invert it because I want more to be darker. And then I'm going to say OK. And so now I've got this red, this dark red to light red, basically saying, um, how many points are in each state. So you've got a whole bunch of states throughout the middle here that have no monuments to Robert E. Lee or no, no places named after Robert E. Lee, I should say. It's not just monuments. And then you've got some here that are really dark and then everything in between. Yes, Colorado has a couple. Let's also say that we want to um, label the features by the number of places inside each state that has something named after him. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to go create labels. And I want to label not the state names like what comes up here, but let's do count of points so that we know exactly how many in each state are named after each person. And I'll change the font size a little bit so it's a little bigger. Let's go a little bigger than that even. Let's go font size 20. And to contrast that red, let's make it a nice bright blue. And we can see it really well now. Perfect. Maybe it'll get a little halo around it. There we go. That looks nice. So we can easily see at a glance which places in the United States, which states have the most places named after Robert E. Lee. And we're going to do that. And then we're going to do the same thing for Martin Luther King. Oops, sorry. We're going to do the same thing for Martin Luther King Jr. We're going to run the analysis. Summarize data. Martin Luther King states. box and there we go and once that's done let's turn off the um, Lee aggregation let's change the symbols for the Martin Luther King layer let's make it nice and contrasted let's say green for Dr. King and let's make uh, the labels stand out create labels points nice and big 20 um, let's do yellow no yeah sure yellow let's make a, a black halo around the yellow there we go now we can see it okay so there we go so now what we can do is we can um, complete step 11 uh, by opening up the attribute table if I open up the attribute table for the Lee points like that, it shows me 
all these features by state, what I want to do is I want to sort by this column right here, count of points, because I want to know what the question's asking is, in the following table, write the names of the four states with the most Robert E. Lee place names as well as their count value. We can go through the table and try to scan it like that, or you can look at the map, or you can just let the table do the work. Click on count of points and do sort descending, so it'll be, it'll be a, a largest to smallest. And there you go. Your answers are right there. And then for the question 13, do the same thing. This time, instead of doing that for Dr. for uh, Robert E. Lee, just create the table and count of points, sort descending, and there you go. You've got your answer right there. I'll close the table and let you guys do that. So fill that out, number of, uh, the state, number of points. Now, what I want you to do, go back to your answer in step two right up here, where I asked, okay, before we start, which places would you expect to have the most um, things named after Robert E. Lee and which one, which places would have the most um, uh, things named after Dr. King? Compare your answers. How well did you do? Did you identify states that had high numbers of points or not? Were you not, uh, were you not very good at it? Were you pretty good at it? You can also go back to the map and just switch back between the two like so. So you can see the dark colors here are very different than the dark colors here. So, so very different attitudes about naming things after these two individuals. And if you know a little bit about them, it makes sense. So pay attention to question 16. We did watch a video about uh, Woodrow Wilson in class. And so make sure that you uh, uh, answer this one. And now we're going to try to um, find some local places. Um, that are named after people and, and try to figure out why they would be named after people. So I'm going to give two examples. Let me be clear. You may not use these two examples in this chart. I'd like you to find your own. But basically what I want to do now is I want to turn all the layers off. Like so. And I am going to switch the base map to the OpenStreet base map because it has names of, of places all over. This might require a little bit of searching, it might require a little bit of talking maybe to your parents about this and getting some ideas, but I want you to spend a little time trying to find five places somewhere in Colorado um, that were named after famous people and, and who those famous people were, because those are toponyms, places named after people. Um, for example, if I were to go here where we live, uh, this is not on the map, so you wouldn't find it on the map here, but Weld County. Is a great example. Um, our county is named after somebody, presumably, whose name was Weld, but we don't probably know uh, why that is. So one thing you can do is just in Google type um, type who was Weld County, Colorado named after. There we go, and it'll tell us here the history of Weld County. And if I read it, it'll say um, Weld County was named after Lewis Ledyard Weld, the first territorial secretary. Mm, okay, so that doesn't tell me much, but it gives me a name. So what I can do then is I can get this guy, Lewis Ledyard Weld. And I can put him in a search bar. And I can look him up. I can read a little about this guy. Graduated from Yale in 1854. Um, moved to Cleveland. Uh, looks like New York City, yada, yada, yada. Uh, in 1862, he resigned his office, aiming to... Okay, so somewhere along here, here he is. He made it to the Colorado Territory in 1861, and he was made the Secretary of State of Colorado and, and was for some time acting governor. So he was kind of an important person in the uh, history of, of Colorado, and then it talks about who he was. So, okay, Weld County is named after somebody who was important to Colorado. Not very controversial, but important, so we know why. So if we look around more and we find other places, you might come across some place like this one. And again, this is off limits. Don't put this in your answer. Little place in eastern Colorado. I've been to before, and you can see it's called Shivington. It's super small. There's a train that runs through, and there's a state highway. Zoom out to give you a little perspective. Shivington is out on the eastern plains. Here's Denver. Here's Colorado Springs. Here's Shivington out here. 
it is really out in the middle of nowhere. You don't even have to slow down when you're driving through Shivington. That's how small it is. So I, you know, you wonder, okay, places like that, that sounds like a person's name. Let's go ahead and try that one. Who was Shivington, Colorado, named after? John M. Shivington, named for John M. Shivington. Okay, let's look that guy up. John M. Shivington. Or we can do Shivington, Colorado's Wikipedia entry too. Who knew? All right, da da da. Tells you about it. Let's learn about this guy. We read about him. Yatta yatta yatta. Eventually we get down to here and we read about Shivington and we realize he led a massacre uh, against Cheyenne, Kiowa, and Arapaho Indians in eastern Colorado. This is one of the more infamous um, period, times in um, Colorado history. Um, today, Shivington would be considered a war criminal, uh, probably put on trial, um, maybe gone to prison for what he did. And so a little place like Shivington, Colorado, not really named after anybody who we want to name things after today. If Shivington were a bigger place, we might be considering changing the name, but because it's out in the middle of nowhere, probably nobody cares about it. So find five places. Um, include the name and the significance of their place in history. And then, um, you know, did you find any names that might be inappropriate today? Um, maybe you did, maybe you didn't. But uh, give it a try and see if you, uh, if you had anything. And then answer this last question. Okay, this one should take you less time um, than the last one. Um, email me if you have any questions. Be sure to ask um, during our remote meeting on Wednesday if you need some help. And uh, good luck.